Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Thursday live stream Q&A with all the members of the Catchmore Carp community and Facebook and YouTube on a Thursday. Hope you're well, enjoying life, enjoying the sun. Um, and you've been out fishing or you're going fishing or, um, yeah, maybe not. Maybe a bit like myself, not really fishing for a couple of weeks because of all my lakes are spawning. But, yeah, it's good to see that everyone's here. Thanks for tuning in. And don't forget to get your questions ready. Any questions and queries you've got about anything to do with carp fishing. And hopefully I'll be able to help you with all your carp fishing questions and queries. Anything. Could be spring fishing, summer fishing, how much bait they use after they spawn, can I still use salt, you know, all how much bait to take to France. All those questions that you've been thinking about, thinking... What do I do with that one? What do I? Oh, well, I tell you what we'll do. We'll ask Leon and the community on the live stream tonight. So get all your questions ready. First thing I want to know from all of you is uh, where are you tuning in from? Because we're all over the place now. Now we're going live on Facebook and Instagram and everywhere, everywhere. I want to know where everyone's from. So put down the area that you come. You don't have to put the exact town unless you want to. But you know, put Norfolk or Essex or Scotland or. And we've got a few from America and South Africa on here normally. So put down where you're from. Tonight, I'm going to... What do we talk about tonight? Well, it's up to you guys. Let me know what you want to talk about. I was going to sort of go along the lines of what... A question I, I've been asked recently over this past week, two or three times, is how much bait do I use? Do I use a lot? Do I use a little bit? I mean, the fish have spawned. Uh, single steel, lots of bait. How much bait... Should I put in for my 48 hour session I'm going going on since they've spawned? So that's something we're going to cover in a minute. As per usual, guys, we go for about 30 to 40 minutes, including everybody, and then about 20 minutes to half an hour to go, we say goodbye to YouTube and Facebook, and we go over to the closed Facebook account where all the Catch More Carp subscribers are, and we catch up with each other and answer any of your questions there. First thing also I want to know is, did you like the spotting tips video? If you liked it, give us a thumbs up, share the love, the algorithm loves it. And um, yeah, good to see you all this Thursday night anyway. So who we got in? Let's have a look. We got Nigel, good to see you mate, hope you're well. Anthony, good to see you mate. Julia, hope you're well my darling. There's Baz, normally Baz is out fishing. You out fishing Baz? Or are they still spawning on your venues? Uh, DK Carper, good to see you, mate. Thanks for tuning in on YouTube. Uh, Facebook says, Evening, Leon. How are you and Mrs. B doing? Doing really, really well. Thank you very much. Off to a wedding this weekend. So, uh, work, been working all the, most of this week after coming back after only doing one night as the fish was spawning. But that's a different story down at the Woolpack. So, I've been doing lots of work, ready to put a new video out Sunday. And I will be away, probably with a hangover Sunday after a wedding of my wife's uh, friends, one of her friends, one of her friend's daughters, probably her best friend's daughters, to be fair, getting married. Uh, Chris says, evening everyone, hope you're well, Chris, good to see you, mate. Dave, good to see you, mate, as well, hope you're well. There's another regular, Steph, evening Leon, evening all, evening to you, mate. Even though watching for the bank tonight, just got the rods out in time, fair play. Hope you catch, mate. Uh, here's Adam. Evening, Leon. I know you said Chodrick for edgy, for eggy-shaped lake bed. Yeah, definitely. If if, it's, if you don't know what you're fishing over, chod rig or a, a chod rig or a long a hook link always done me well. We have a pop up. But what else? If you use a D rig or a hinge stiff rig with hook link, any type of hook bait, you'll grab a bar on the lake bed. I would definitely one of two rigs. If I'm fishing. If I get into a new swim or a new lake and I have no nut, the fish are showing, the fish are there, last thing I want to be doing is finding spots and all that. You can't go far wrong with banging a chod rig out there. Even if it lands on top of a bar, you know it's going to be fishing. Either a chod rig or a long hook link. That's what I like to use. A long, slow sinking pop up. You know, 12 to 18 inches long. Slow sinking pop up. Bit of foam on. Chuck it out where you've seen the fish. Hopefully you get a drop. If not, yeah, still be hopefully fishing this time of year, just on top of the weed or the or the chard or whatever it is, and then you can do all your plumbing about the next day. You may even catch one. The amount of times I've actually caught one, 
I'm actually just walking around in the dark with me barra. A lot of the old videos from years ago, you'll see me turning up just before dark or first light, just wheeling the barra around to where the fish are and just casting three rods to them. And that'd be it for the night. And I wouldn't normally set up unless uh, I'd seen something. So that's what that's what I used to do. I used to just chod rigs, just look for the fish, bang them out, and hopefully you'd be fishing. Even on top of blanket weed and a bit of Canadian that, the long chods, long running chods, they're always working. So I hope that answers or helps you, Adam. Uh, Any anyway, what's all right, Leon? Has it been very good, mate? Hope you well. Thanks for tuning in on YouTube. Uh, Paul White, good evening, everyone. Good evening to you, mate. And John Adams, good evening, mate. Uh, good to see you. And you, John. Good to see you here, mate. Terry Beard, evening, everyone from Fox Earth Fisheries on the bank. Oh, happy days. Wish I was on the bank, mate. Wish I was on the bank. Uh, I'm out filming next week. We are going to... Actually, I'm not going to say where we're going, so I'm not too sure yet. <clears throat> but for our new series for CC Moore, I'll be out filming next week CC Moore. Not even too sure where it's going to be yet. Because it's part of the new competition, Biscuit Bonanza. So we'll be doing, uh, yeah, we'll be filming wherever we're filming uh, uh, next week, or, uh, or near enough anyway. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. The new, the new series which we're going to be doing. Uh, hey everyone, I'm back. Been ages. Yep, yeah, good to see you though, mate. Jeff Minor, even though, even you, Jeff. There's Phil, even there, everybody from the Kempish Canal. Two breams so far. The Kempish Canal. God. Do you know what? I've got to have a chat with you, Phil. I tell you, when, when I see you at, at the, one of the socials, uh, I've got to have a chat with you about, about fishing in Belgium. I've got a few places I want to check out and anywhere you can possibly suggest. But, yeah, nice to be tuning in from the Kempish Canal. Big ups to you, mate. Hope you, uh, you, hope you catch more anyway. Uh, what was I going to say? Yes. Oh, regarding the socials, we still have, if you're interested, guys and ladies... One place left on the Sander social, 9th to the 11th of July. And also, we've got three places, just three places left on the Norton Disney Turner's Lake social, 21st to the 23rd of July as well. So, if you want to know some more details, send me a DM, a message on Facebook, a message on Instagram, and I'll give you some details about the cost and what we've got going, and the goodie bags and the food and all that sort of stuff, and what we'll be doing for the 48 hours. Uh, who else have we got in tonight? Douglas Coles, good to see you, mate. Hope you're well. Evening, Paul. For, uh, he's tuning in on YouTube. God, I was, I was getting confused. I'm, I'm streaming so many different places. I was getting confused. I think Instagram, no, you, no YouTube. That you, you tend to get a bit confused sometimes. <laughs> now, bear with me. Uh, favorite, good video, Leon. Yeah, the spotting video. I hope it gave you some ideas of accuracy, of hitting that spot. I'm not getting frap ups. You know, I'm basically just trying to help you get better at your spotting, more consistent, not via ways. You know, it's just one of them sort of videos where I've been asked by people, oh, can you tell me how I can spot more accurately? Accurately, It tends to veer off or fall short or whatever. Uh, what not do I use? All them type, there's four or five really good tips in there that if you're spotting, you're having problems, consistency, or just actually getting a few spots out of that, cracking off on that, this will be the video for you over on the Catch More Carp website. Little, there'll be a trailer on there, so you don't have to invest in anything. You don't have to sign up for a month or a week or anything like that. There's a little trailer on there. Of all the videos, there's a short trailer or a long trailer, depending what, so you can go and have a look, see what, you know, if it's of interest to you. Uh, Dave Martin, good to see you, mate. Good evening from the bank. Hope you're well. Uh, Liam Walcott. Good to see you, mate, on YouTube. Evening. There's Nick, I, Leon, the family, I, too, and everyone. Ah, question from Paul. Get your questions in, guys. Do you stay away from the Northerns in the summer and go match the hats? Well, I do a couple of things, really. After they've spawned, which was really going to concentrate this sort of live on, really. After they've spawned, because I get asked so many questions. Bait, match the hats, fleurs, all that. I tend to mix and match it up a bit. I tend to go more onto bottom baits as the summer goes on i tend to give them quite a bit more bait once they've spawned they normally have a rest for a week or two and then they're up for a month you know those first month that june to july i found can be very productive if you're fishing a lake on a regular basis and you can get a bit of feeding 
You know, rather than your little bits and pieces from spring, get your feeding, get some particle in, get some good quality boiling in there. You know, you, you can use anything, a little bit of bulk in there, sweet corn, maize, tigers. Start introducing it a, a bit more in bulk on the spots that you're going to regularly fish. Regard to hook baits, I still have one on all, but I don't think you can beat a white or a washed out pink, the new ones they released, Northern Special. On a hinge stiff or a multi-rig or a 360 or dare I say a Ronnie. A glugged up Northern Special has been glugged up with a Northern Special booster. Or it could be any particular bait that you're using. Could be a, a cell hook bait, could be bait works, could be a sticky, could be any one of those. Glugged up, firing out loads of uh, attraction sugars and all that they love sugars these fish they, sugar is energy so they're looking for that energy once they've depleted all their energy from spawning they're looking for you know sweet things with carbs and you know stuff that's going to give them energy going to build them back up again sugars liquid sweeteners add those to your hook baits this time of year i found we got the bottom baits but don't forget once they start munching they're going to be clearing areas of weed they're still quite weedy on the lakes at the moment spots aren't really there but they will start to as the summer goes on into, into towards the autumn they're going to be clearing these areas and that's when i start transitioning over to bottom baits you know july depends how quick they're going to be eating those areas you'll find them you'll go and you go bloody hell that's hard you'll pull it back and it'll be clear to me i want to be putting a you know, a, um, a D-rig on there, something stiff, something that's going to, you know, trick them up with a bottom bait or a wafter, a little dumbbell wafter, something like that with, you know, a good bit of feed out there, chop whole boilies, you know, particles, emp, maize, tight, chop tigers, whole tigers, you know, just to give a bit of everything. So, yeah, in answer to your question and talking about how much to feed after they've spawned or this time of year in the summer, yeah, I still always have one on the northern Definitely, even if it's just off the baited area, I'd have a, one on a northern. I just think they're so, they've done me so well. A white northern special, which is off-white, once you've sort of put a load of the liquids in, the designated boost liquid and the liquid sweeteners, it takes it an off-white. I hate um, that sort of colour, I suppose, if you can see that. It's like a, that's where it's had me dirty mitts all over it. But it takes it an off-creamy white, not a, not, a, not a bright white, like a bit of paper. So yeah, you know, I hope that answers or helps you with your question. Oliver Grolly Smith, evening to you, mate. Hope you're well. Uh, Dave says from Milnall, Suffolk. Cheers, Dave. Swindon, but but from Newcastle. Dave says, fair play. Jeff says Stephen is massive. Fair play, yeah. Uh, Adam says, have you tried oyster sauce? Yes, I have over the years, but I tell you what works. We've had this on the show before. Is that one? Go and have a check that out. You can get that at Tesco's. I add that to my liquid liver or whatever it is this summer. I'll be adding that to my liquid liver or my hot chorizo. Whatever liquid it is, I'll be adding this to it. Especially with the test bait. Because the test bait's got a lot of garlic in it. Got a lot of heat in it. Paprika. A lot of chilli in it. This is going to complement it very, very well. You know, this is going to really complement it. The old sh shira always have trouble saying it. Shirasha chili sauce, extra hot. You can get that for about three or four quid. That'll do you a lot of glugging out of boilies. So whilst yes, I've tried the oyster, oyster salts, very salty the oyster one. Chili's very very hot. Uh, Heathrow, Rob's from Heathrow. Good to see you, mate. Feltham, that's uh, Stuart. Hope you're well, mate. Nick says South East London, Leon. Yeah. John says Cardiff, Wales. Uh, Ollie says Foot we feel currently at my lads, one on one in Nottingham. Douglas is from Hampshire. Paul's from Manchester, really from Essex. I used to live in Essex. I'm over the dark side now in Kent. Over the dark side. We're from East London to Essex to the dark side in Kent. My missus, she, she's a Kent girl, you see. Uh, good evening from sunny Lancashire. Good evening to you. Phil said, found the fish rods on the dance floor. 
Yeah, we need to do some dancing on the dance floor. There he is, Dave Jones. Now, Dave's going to be turning up, hopefully, if he still can make it, to the Norton Disney Social. So he'll be there to help out. Catch a lot of fish, this guy. You'll learn lots from him, especially um, up there when you've got a bit of one-to-one -one time with him. I uh, say, so we've still got three spaces left. Uh, Dave's evening, I hope everyone's well. Wish this North Easty would do one, although it's got them on the feed big time. See, I don't mind the North North Easties this time of year. No end of hatches at the minute too, so if you're out, keep your eyes peeled. Yeah, Dave's been having an especially good session down at, um, what's it bloody called? Not Blue Water. God, begins with B. God, I'm, there it is tonight. I think I need to have coffee rather than a cup of tea. Might be having a trip down himself at some point. But well done, Dave, mate. And look forward to seeing you at Norton Disney. There's Julia tuning in from Comfort My West Suffolk Sofa. Lovely. Ivan's evening, Leon from Stoke on Trent. Evening to you, Ivan. Good to see you, mate. Hope you're well. Paul Davidson says Sheffield. Newport, South Wales. Paul White, 70 we're up. 71 pound we're up. Wow, what result, Steve Root? I'm in Sid Cup Kent. Yes, we saw that. We had uh, we saw one of our members, Steve Root, had a seventy-one pound mirror. We've got some pictures on the closed Facebook group. Catch my cop, but yeah, well done, mate. Fair play and happy. Good to see you, Paul from Sick Cup. Jonathan from Lincolnshire. Nigel's from Sandy, Bedfordshire. Yep, yeah, I come through it sometimes, Nigel. Gary Gator, South East London. Matthew says West Millions. Robbo, yeah, fingers up to you as well, mate. Andy Orham, evening, Leon. Everyone, evening to you, mate. Uh, Davis, Davis had bluebells. How could I not think that's where he's fishing bluebells? Might have to have a trip up there myself. 35 quid a night, though. I'm a bit like, hmm, it's expensive, isn't it? Dave said, I had 22 fish out of blue bars, bluebells mallard this week in two nights. Everyone around me was filling it in with baits. I've kept quiet and just fished with solid bags, and it paid off big time. Sometimes less is more, 100%. 100%, sometimes less is more, most definitely. Uh, Darren said, evening, folks. Evening to you, Darren, mate. Hope you're well. Evening, Neil Stewart. Yeah, evening, Stewart. Matthew Marvels. Haven't seen the spotting video yet, Leon. Are you off to France this year? A uh, spotting video is going to be on, Matthew, the closed Facebook group. You can see the little trailer on there. If you go over to www.catchmorecarp.co.uk. Yeah, I'll just put the, I'll just put the, uh, the link so you can get over, so you can go and have a look, guys. That's our subscription website. Go and have a look at that one over there. Uh, if you haven't seen it before... Uh, let's have a look. Let's, let's go back to where he was, but you've got to catch up now. Catch up to where I was. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Here we go. Uh, yeah, Matthew says, and since spotting very early on, are you off to France this year? Um, I haven't been yet. I'm going to do some winter fishing again. I may go to Belgium or France in the next couple of weeks before the lakes reopen, if they're not spawning over there. So I might have a, a three or four nighter in Belgium. It's looking like it could be happening. Or down to France with a big boat and a big lake. Busy as anything, though, over there. Uh, we shall see. We shall see. Oi, Nick. Hope you're all well. Checking in from Avonmouth. Bloody hell. Home tomorrow. Family time and a big barbecue. King of the grill. You are. Nick, you should do a little barbecue video, shouldn't you? You should do the old barbecue and cob videos as well. Good to see you, mate. Hope you're well. Uh, Norfolk Car Carper. Off the La Plaine, France, Saturday. First time fishing abroad. Good luck. You will love it. Just enjoy it. That's the thing. Enjoy it, Norfolk Carper. Yeah, Matthew says, good luck, North, Norfolk Carper. Yeah, good luck, mate. Up your well. Uh, Billy Murray says, how long after spawning will you get back to fishing from Liverpool? Normally a couple of weeks. I mean, the lakes that I fish, they're closed for three weeks now. They're not going to be open for, they give them a good rest. Two weeks minimum, I would say. Give them a good rest, get their appetite back, let them settle down, get back their habits. Then, then I'll start fishing from again. Uh, John's only on the game. Not out tonight. Home time rigs. I'm from Suffolk. Great spiffing vlog. Uh, Paul Foster has my name cut. Yes, he has, Paul. Good to see you, mate. It's me that just got my rods out. Looking good, too. Yeah, good luck, Paul. Let us know how you get on. Uh, and he says, evening, you're driving back from work. Out the weekend with my boys. 24 hours, and he's buzzing. Oh, 
Great memories, mate, and great memories that he will remember. Good evening. Uh, Matthew, any tips fishing in France for the first time now? Yeah, another question that I get asked a lot. I think it's going to be, we're going to be doing, we're bringing back question of the week. It's going to be question of the month as a video on the Catch More Cart. But this is going to be one of the main quest questions. Uh, one of the videos I'm going to do in more detail. Let me just write this down. Uh, fishing in France. France. Uh, tips and bait. Okay. So, but 99% of the lakes in France public lakes, no, sorry, not public lakes, commercial lakes that most of people go to, they are tailored for you not having to bring any extra gear than you normally would do on your fishing. So just, I would say, just beef up your gear a little bit more. If you use size eight hooks, take some size sixes and fours. You still use your favorite rigs, your Ronnie's, your bottom bait rigs, your, your, your um, slip D. You use all their rigs over in France when you're fishing there. You don't really need anything extra than what you've got. The fish is just a bit bigger. Just up your, if you use a 10 pound line up, it's a 15. You know, there may be some rules on some of the lakes where 15's a minimum or special diameter's your minimum. So I check with those. You don't need to go mad with bait. Biggest tip I would say for fishing, wherever you're going, whether it be Abbey, uh, Dream, wherever it is you're going to, Take bait with you, shelf life or, you know, doctored freezer bait, particle, whatever it is, but don't stick it all in. I, I've seen and heard and asked this question, or oh, when I get there, shall I put it all in and just sit on it all week? This is the way you've got to look at it. You're going to that commercial lake for that week. You know, you're having a bit of a holiday, you're chilling out, you're putting your rods out, you want to catch some fish, just like... Everyone else has been doing for the weeks and the weeks and the weeks before you've been there. So there's been someone there fishing your lake, fishing that swim the week before and the week before that and the week before that. So you don't know how much bait has been going out onto that spot, do you? You really don't know. It could have been loads, could have been nothing. Was there anyone there the week before? Tip I can give is less is more. Just like someone said earlier on, that first night, all I want to do is gauge what's happening, where the fish are, in the swim. I mean, you may not be able to move, but just think, if you're fishing all to the far island, there's a great big island in front of you, that's where you've got to fish to, all three rods or four or two, whatever it is, and the fish starts showing. You put all your bait out there, boom, you're out there, and the fish starts showing the margins, you know. Oh, didn't know there was a plateau to the right, 20 yards out. That's, you know, where they catch a lot of fish from. That first night... Speak to the bailiffs, right, what's been happening? Who's been in there a week before? Do you know if they put much bait in, etc., etc.? Try and find out as much information you can about who's been in that swim the week before you and the week before that. And then that first night, maybe it's the first two nights, but that first night, always going light. Normally you're knackered anyway from travelling, so you don't want to put all that effort in. I'll just get the bait boat or cast or whatever I'm doing, get the boat or whatever it is. Handful of bait, bags, you know, just... A little bit in the hopper, whatever it is, fish for a bite that first night. If you catch one, boom, it's made your week already. You've caught one. You haven't blanked. You're off to a fly. Everything else is bonus, isn't it? I always, that first night, go in light, fish for a bite, see what's happening around me and around the lake as well. Fish may be nowhere near. They may be over the other side of the lake. And if you put that bait in, it's like, oh, I've got to sit on it now. If you haven't, you can try and cat, set traps, see what's happening, see where the fish are moving, what time they're showing. You know, all these sort of things you can work out as your session goes on. If you've got all your bait out there, you're right, you can't take it out. That's what I learned many years ago. You can't put it, you, you can put it in, but you can't take it out. Little and often that first, first 24 hours, see what's going on. That would be my top tip for fishing in France. And I think that's going to be one of our our videos on question of the week so Matthew Mullins I think you may have won yourself a mug let me just put this down but well, that's what we do if we get a question from Instagram Facebook wherever it is and we use that as one of the videos the uh, you know the question of the month then I'll be contacting you Matthew and you'll be winning yourself a lovely catch my cart mug Matthew Mullins YouTube okay let me just put that put that down there and so, yeah, so I hope that's helped. I hope that's given a few of you a bit more, you know, idea of what you want to do. Of course, if it's an absolute out-and-out out 10, 
10 runs a night, runs water, catching under fish each all week, then, you know, you've got to go large from the off, haven't you? You want to catch as many as you do. Not my idea of, of fun fishing in France, to be fair, but each their own, isn't it? Okay, right, well, 27 minutes in already. Uh, Rob, I said, if you're using Tiger Nuts 48 hour session, how many do you use after they spawn in? Again, Tiger Nuts, it's not one of those uh, baits you need to put loads in. I really, I very rarely put more than a handful of whole and chopped that complement me hemp, me maize, me boilies. I don't just fish tigers. I fish a few different things within the mix if I use it. And then I don't put in, you don't need to put in loads of tigers. They're not one of those baits. You can catch a fish on a single tiger. You don't, you know, they're like a higher tract in the fishing world underneath there. Fish will home in on even a single tiger. They're very attractive. You don't need to put loads in either. Hi, right, George. Hope you're well, mate. Hope you're good. Uh, Matt, you said. Hey, mate, always pleasure to watch your videos. Smash it up. Thanks, Matt. I've done about smashing it out this spring. I've had a few, but not, not that many, I'll tell you. Uh, yeah, good to see you tuning in. There's Paul. Good evening, Leon, and all the members. Evening to you, mate. Uh, Jeff said, Leon, I'm fishing a really tricky, rich lake full of weed and silt. Are there ways or places more likely to have bloodworm beds other than constant leading about? Um, the silt areas are where you're going to find a bloodworm. Up against weed, normally the, the bloodworm like to be, from my opinion, from what I've found, near the Canadian. So if you've got a, a, a Canadian bit of weed, then you've got a silt run next to it, can be a lot of the time that in that silt, next to that Canadian, is where those bloodworm are going to be. Get yourself a normal lead or one of them grapple leads, something like that. Screw in four screws into a lead, cast it out, retrieve it back, and you should get all the gunk and everything on those. And you should get your bloodworm. That's the way I've. If I'm looking specifically bloodworm in the autumn or summer, late summer, then that's what I do to try and find it. Uh, Dave said, Great video on spotting. Glad that it helped you, mate. I really am. Uh, also, I run out of biscuits. That's no good, Philip, is it? Run out of biscuits. Have to find a supermarket to That's no good at all, is it? Bloody, I can never run out of biscuits. There is Brian Mills. Good to see you, mate. Hope you're well on YouTube. Uh, fact, leave them to it. They're spawning, 100%. <coughs> Mark Price, him, Leon. Already for 40 hours on private farm lake. 14 acres all to myself. Oh, bliss. Also, big night next Wednesday. Come on, you are. Yes, next Wednesday. West Ham are in the, uh, the European Conference Cup, isn't it? Or something like that. Next Wednesday. Uh, Nick said, do you use more pop-ups than you do wafters or both? Um, depends on what type of year. Really good question, Nick. I tend to use more pop-ups early spring, that sort of springtime, wintertime. That's when I use pop-ups. More visual, less weed about. Uh, there may be a little bit of debris, something like that. I want it to sit up above it. Whereas late spring, summer, autumn, I want to be hard on the bottom because the fish normally have, have made their areas. They, they they fed on certain areas and cleared them off. Last thing I want is a big pop-up sitting over top of it where they're feeding on their bottom baits. So it depends. Use a lot of pop-ups in the early spring and winter. Uh, you still use them in the summer and autumn, but mainly go for wafters or bottom, straight bottom baits, late spring, summer or autumn. Let me just have a slurp. Mm. Nice cup of tea there. Uh, oh, a question for you guys. Here, question for you. How often... See, I've got a little list of questions I like to ask for my own sanity. How often do you go fishing? Put down in the comments below. Every week. One night a month. Every weekend. Three nights. One night. Every two weeks. Let me know. Interested to find out from you guys and ladies out there. How often do you go fishing? I try and get out every week. Unless it's spawning, I have a couple of weeks off. Or it's a family thing, like a wedding. Uh, but normally, I normally try and fish every week for at least a night. Normally two nights. Very, very occasionally three nights when Mrs. B lets me. When I get the war office to give me a pass. And he says, what baits were you using before CCM? I've used lots of different baits, to be fair. Before CCM, bloody hell, I've been with them so long. I'm just trying to think. I've used uh, Sticky many years ago. I used to work for them. What you'll find is a lot of these baits that I've used is because I actually worked doing 
the media because I, I run a media company that creates content and looks after people's adverts and Facebook and Google ads and all that sort of stuff. So if I'm working for someone like Sticky, or used to, when I used to work for Sticky, I'd be using their bait or Urban Baits. So I used to look after all their advertising and social media. So I'd be using their bait, something like that, you know. So I've used quite a few different ones over the years. Uh, Steve Chris Hapley on top vids, bud. Oh, glad you like them. We're off to Meadow Lake in France. A couple of weeks, any tip for us? Oh, look at the videos I've done on Meadow Lakes. Really like Meadow Lakes. They like a bit of bait in there, mate. That's for certain. I would be tempted now, if you're going in a couple of weeks, after they've spawned, I'll be tempted to fish quite a bit of bait. They love a bit of bait in there. That's for certain. It's uh, yes, yeah, a really nice setup there. The guy runs out, and a couple of guys will run it. Really nice. Yeah, let me know how you get on, mate. Let me know how you get on. Darren said, would you use rock salt after spawning? 100%. They still need salt in their diet at different times. Plus, it's a very good attractor, I've found. You don't need to go mad. I use the fine Himalayan rock salt. You get it off eBay. You can get it from CC Moore. I mix that with crumb boily. I use that in a little PVA bag or as a little, um, instead of foam over the hook bait. Still... still Still put it on the spot, big big pieces of rock salt. But yeah, I, still, I, I use it all year round. I just think it's a good attractor. Baz said, my lakes are back open Sunday. So I've booked on for 48 hours, fair play. I've been using my time to cook up loads of different particles. I can't wait. Fair play. It's always good. If Like this couple of weeks, I've ordered a Burko boiler. And I'll be cooking up loads of particles ready for the summer assault on my lakes as well. Evening Rich, another member of the Catch More Carp community. Good to see you, mate. Uh, Paul said, thanks for answering my question, mate. I love the Northerns. I prefer the 12 millers on a spinner. Yeah, 12 millers are very good. I tend to use the 12 millers on a 360 winter springtime. Used them a lot on Sanders. They've done very well for me over there, catching many fish to well over 40 pound. Yellow, white and orange, can't go wrong. No, definitely can't go wrong. Don't forget, guys, if you want to subscribe to the Catch More Carp website, get yourself over at www.catchmorecarp.co.uk over a monthly subscription or a yearly subscription. Loads of tutorials, loads of campaign videos on there, loads of discounts, loads of stuff. Well, you get, well get your money's worth, put it that way. Uh, Ernest Grobler, he's evening mate, South Africa, fair play. Enter winter season, I can't wait to get on the bank enjoying the live chat. Good to see you. Thank you very much for tuning in from South Africa. So what So what to do when you get caught up in weed with fish on, as I had to break off as it went into rushes. Now, weed and rushes is a totally different thing, okay? If I'm connected to a fish and it's got in weed, first thing, I'm ejecting the lead before anything happens, okay? So if it goes in the weed, it's already ejected the lead. I would just keep a tight line on it it's got to come out at some point. I won't pull and pull and pull, pull it and try and get it out. Be patient. Be very patient. Keep a tight line on it. That fish will eventually come out. You'll be able to gain some line on it. If it goes into the rushes, that's a whole different ball game. I think what's happened there would be a rushes or snags or whatever, then you're either going to have to tell a bailiff, get a boat, pull for a break, that's the last result, Paul, for a break. But I think the fish has ejected the hook and put it into the rushes or a tree in the rushes or whatever. Uh, that's what I think's happened. If it's weed, just keep a steadier pressure on it. I've had fish on for an hour, just steady pressure, and then they've eventually come out. I love the Strasher sauce. Been using it lately and bagged a few. Yes. Shiracha sauce, I think. That's the one, isn't it? Yeah, mix that with your whatever liquid you're using. Evening, Sean. Good to see you, mate. Hope you're well. Uh, that's it. Shrasha. You got it right that time. <laughs> uh, Sean's from Crawley, West Sussex. Bloody old 36 minutes in. Uh, Peterborough. Brian's from. South End, me. Boohoo, Kent. Yeah, South End. Yeah, I've been there a few times on nights out. Wayne said, when is the best moon face to fish and which one... Best to fish on IE month of the year from Kent, Leon, near you, pal. Ah, oh, hi, Wayne, mate. Moon phases. Different lakes react to moon phases differently. I like both moon phases. I've caught them when there's not been a moon phase in sight. I've caught them on the moon phase. Every lake's different. 
Every big fish is different. I can't say one's better than the other. A lot of people think a full moon is best. Whereas I like a, a new moon. I like. But every lake is different. Some lakes like the new moon. Some lakes like the lead up to the full moon. The three days before. I've always found the new moon a couple of days afterwards. is always been good as well. So it really does depend one. So soon we're going to be cutting off YouTube, a couple of the Facebook accounts, and we'll be going over to the Catch More Carp subscriber closed uh, closed uh, Facebook group soon. So about another five minutes or so, then we'll be going over there. Matthew Mullins, Bayswater Leon. Oh, I love that place, Bays. I've been over there a few times. Never fished it, but I've been over there filming and things like that. Mark Price, Letchworth, Hertfordshire. Baz says Cheshire is from. Liam Walcott says, ready, no fish at the moment due to spawn, but nearly the favourite time of year. I love the summer and the winter, would you believe? Uh, Elliot Watson said, all right, Leon, how's your fishing this week? I'm on book tour of France for next year, a Lac de Cholot in the Champagne region of France. I've heard of that one. Some nice fishing there. No fishing for me. One night this week, I had to leave because I was spawning. There he is, man of the moment, Roger Bacon. How you doing, mate? Hope you're well. Uh, old Roger catches them for fun. So we should be getting Roger on the live at some point as one of our guests. I must speak to Roger and get you on, mate. Tell us uh, how to catch him. Uh, no problem, Matt, Matthew. Hope you're well. Okay. Ronnie says, Leon, what are your favourite butt rests? Which do you have most confidence in for gripping your rods? For gripping the rods, I've found the fox ones that you turn like that are really good if you're fishing snags or something like that the fox ones that turn are really good you've also got uh, a nash one that flips over and you've also got the jag ones which i've used before when i'm fishing my rods up high that that are clip on to the back back rest as well which are really really good so there's a few good ones out there normal butt rests i use the fox ones to be fair or the esp ones normal u-shaped ones they're both pretty good Evening, mate. Watching from a very hot Tenerife. Andy Owen, you lucky sort. You had to put it in there, didn't you? You had to put it that you're in Tenerife, didn't you? Uh, Rich says his syndicate reopens tomorrow. Paul said our lake is closed until the 16th of June as carp are still spawning, so work party this weekend instead. Okay, right. It looks like we are going to... Um, Stop everyone now. We're gonna we're gonna say good night to YouTube, to my Leon Bartle Carp Angler Facebook group, the Catchmore Carp Facebook page as well. Thanks guys for tuning in. It's been a great live. We're gonna say good night now, and we're gonna go over to the Catchmore Carp Facebook closed group, which one of the benefits of being a monthly or an annual subscriber or have a subscription. Not only do you get over 300 videos, loads of discounts, but you also get access to myself on the closed Facebook group. Loads of videos, campaign videos, lots of discounts with tackle shops and uh, CC Moore, bait companies and JP Precision, loads of different companies. 10% off the Keen Angler for all your online needs. But uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in and hopefully we'll see you next Thursday, guys. And thank you very much for tuning in this week. And we'll see you. Um, we'll, we'll see you next week, next Thursday. Just ending the streams now. Uh, that's what technology is for you. It's good for you.